We're back with another video. In today's video, we're going to go over FOMC, see what happened. We saw a big 100 point sell off. We're going to go over the trades we took this past week and where we think the market's going to go in this coming week. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what you trade. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. If you saw my previous video, you saw that I was in a long. I was actually in a long till 4040, took profit at 4040, and then I actually flipped short, targeting about 3990. It was a one to one. It was a 90 point gain getting in from 39.50 i actually took parcels as soon as we broke the recent high at 40.10 so took parcels at 40.10 took the rest off at 40.40 as we hit that yesterday and then i was looking for shorts the next trade i took was actually flipping short as soon as i took profit at 40.40 very small size so it was just kind of like an entry because i knew fomc was coming now i got in short here and i was targeting the support to the left here at 39.90 i just thought that we would trade back down in there because i was originally bearish on the market but i saw some things pointing to a squeeze to the upside so once i took that 90 point gain long off the table i just put in a small short and i was looking to add if we actually traded up and i had a, a, a few theories so one thing i wanted to show you was the fear and greed index and the put to call ratio this was a huge red flag to me that they were going to want to dump this real fast and hard to stop out a lot of longs because we had to put the call ratio up so high. Remember I said I flipped long because this was so high and we need to stop out shorts. We did that and this put the call ratio absolutely tanked. The past couple days went down so aggressively from a high of about 1.16 down to 0.87. It went up a bit, but it was 0.87. So it was extremely low, extremely fast. And whenever this happens, market makers dump it to the opposite direction. So that was just one red flag. If you take a look at through the bear market, as, as soon as you saw the bottom, the bottom of one, one of the bottoms in the stock market was June 16th on my screen here. June 16th, the put to call ratio was at an extreme high at 1.1. And then a low was at about uh, June 27th. So if you take a look at the chart from June 16th to June 27th, it was right here is the bottom. So June 16th was the bottom. Put to call ratio was very high. So what that means is good time to long. So we did that and once we went long, Boom, you would get all the way to June 27th. What happened June 27th? June 27th, we had a, a very sharp decline in, in two days. So in two days, we went from a high of 39.50 to 38.10. So that's a 140 point drop on the S&P 500 in two days after what happened? After the put to call ratio went down extremely fast. So you see my screen here? We went to a high June 16th, 1.1. A low of 0.82 June 27th, very fast, sharp decline. What happened? In two days, there was a 140 point drop from high to low. We had this exact same decline, put to call ratio very high and then very low. What happened? Well, very high to very low. If we go back now and see actually what happened, this is just in one day. In one day, we went from 40.73 to 39.63. We had a 110 point drop in one day. So that means that tomorrow we could see a little more downside actually push down to this support here at 39.50. That's very pos possible. Come down there and then bounce. I'm currently flattening out of all my positions. There was a second trade I took on NASDAQ as well. I'll show you that in a second. I thought there was a high probability we would dump 100 points from the high, whatever the high is from FOMC. We went up very high, almost stopped myself out actually. Um, I was in a NASDAQ trade as well and I had to take off some size because I was in NASDAQ and ES futures short and I took off some size and if I didn't, I, you know, my loss would have been bigger than I would have wanted to because NASDAQ had a huge spike. But then it came back down and hit my TP, which was at 12,750. I'll go over that one in a second. But ES came to resistance, and that's when I got out at 39.90 because there's this this support here. Now I'm looking to you know reposition, possibly get in long after we come down a little more. You know, if we trade that 39.50 area, I can get long again. You know, we are really chopping around, but honestly, right now. I, it, it, again, it's tough. We just had such a huge move. I don't really want to get any trades. Any trades I'm going to take are going to be scalps because my targets have been, been hit now. So we had that Derek versions play out. Uh, I'll just show you now the NASDAQ trade. So the NASDAQ trade, I got in at 12.850. So this is the the one problem I had here. I had um, I had two contracts short, right? So I'll show you. Well, I shorted here uh, 12.850. Uh, I got in as we ramped into the close yesterday. I personally thought, you know, we could sweep these highs to the left, but I didn't think we'd go much higher. So I, I did a buffer here and I had my stop be just below 13,000. So my stop was just below 13,000. 
and I was targeting 12,750. So I got in short yesterday and I thought that we could potentially push up and sweep these highs to the left. So I had two contracts short. So I had the short on NASDAQ, I had the short on ES futures and my target was at least 12,750, but honestly targeting much lower. But first I just wanted to lock that in. What I ended up doing was, and it was it a was good call, um, I took off one one contract as we were trading about 12,900 before FOMC started. Let me go down to the one hour chart because we can see it was it got pretty wild. 12, 880 were traded around about 9, 10 a.m. I, I took off the one contract because I thought, okay, if there's a possibility we have a really big spike and I don't want to have much size on when this happens because every $1 the NASDAQ moves, it's $20 in profit or loss. So if NASDAQ goes up 100 points with one NASDAQ contract, that's a 2,000 US loss. So with two contracts, that's a 4,000 US loss per 100 points. Well, we spiked about 200 points. So 200 points on two contracts would be like an $8,000 loss. That's a bigger loss than I wanted. So what I did was I took off one contract at 12880 and I had my other contract and I didn't have a stop placed on that because I figured that if we did have a pop, we would retrace and I could handle hundreds of points more to the upside of, of loss and I could just watch it and manage it. So I just had the one contract short, much smaller size, size that I'm okay with. Uh, once I saw that we had the pop at 2 p.m. You'll see usually on FOMC days, if we pop at 2 p.m., then when it comes to about 2.40 p.m., the opposite happens when Jerome Powell speaks because there's a release at 2 p.m. and then Jerome Powell speaks at 2.30. What typically happens is if there's a pop at 2 p.m., later, 2.40 p.m., we sell off or vice versa. If there's a drop at 2 p.m., at 2.35, you go long and it'll rock it. Obviously, it doesn't happen all the time. This is a gamble but it all aligned with my bias. I had my original short bias to begin with all this. So once I saw we had the pop and we started to come down at about 240, I got a lot more confident that I could I could add the position back in. So I pretty much added the position back around the same spot. Actually, it was a little higher. I added it around 12,950. So I added my short contract back in, the one I took off at 12,880 at 12,950. So 70 points higher, saving myself about no, one thousand dollars, and didn't have to go through that drawdown with two contracts. And then we came down. My TP was twelve seven fifty, and we hit that. So it was about one hundred fifty points averaged between two cont contracts short with Nasdaq. So that was a great trade, and the ES trade worked out perfectly as well. So that's why I'm I'm just sitting on my hands now. You know, I hit hit all the TPs. Everything's good there. You know, I got about um, fifty points of short with the ES trade and 150 points short on the NASDAQ trade. And it was about small to medium size. I didn't want to go too huge again because FOMC I had to be able to handle drawdowns because it would be pretty wild. So with a big candle like this, um, like I said, what I personally think is we could push down a little more. We could come down to this support here about 3950 and we could begin to push up again. It's actually, it's possible. Things are, some things are still looking bullish. Um, a lot of internals on the NASDAQ are, are not. It looks like, you know, we could start seeing a little more weakness in the NASDAQ compared to the ES. Maybe what we'll do is we'll actually trade down to my final target by the end of March that I said we're going to sweep these lows to the left here at 3,800. So we could just tr start trading down, trending lower. This is a huge, big volume candle of, of reversal. So we could just chop around and then and start to trade back down to sweeping the lows to the left at 3,800. But again, I'm going to be on the sidelines waiting a bit. One thing that's uh, keeping me is because we have a uh, divergence still on HYG. So on HYG here, you can see that since February 21st, we have gone higher. This is smart money. So smart money has been going higher as since the 21st, SPX has actually been lower. So divergence playing out again. This could lead for a little more upside coming in the market before we continue to trade lower. So that's just one thing. There's a few other signals that, that keeps me hesitant for shooting for that 3800 target now. But we're just going to keep an eye out, see how everything's playing, panning out. I hope everything uh, went well for you on your end. Look out for the next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. And I'm going to keep trading about 5-15 minute charts this coming week. I have no huge bias. Again, we could see 20 to 30 points of downside. Maybe we bought them around 39.50 on Thursday, possibly Friday, or we just we just keep selling off and then trading down and sweeping those lows to the left. Personally, I'm going to be on the sidelines waiting and watching. And if I see an opportunity, you'll see me post a video Sunday for the weekly re recap, or look over the next one next Wednesday for the midweek market update. Hit the thumbs up button if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.